Hey guys, Kev here. And uh, I wanted to do a disassembly to show you guys how to take apart and maintain your pony stout. I did one on the prototype, but it's always good to do a sort of follow-up. This can also kind of serve as my debrief video I like to do on every drop. Um, first, I want to say thank you to everybody who has picked up a pony stout so far. These are still available currently. Uh, we did order quite a bit of these. I think the run was 800. Uh, we did set some aside for warranty and some aside for uh, Blade Show. But uh, I think there was oh, a little over 700 available. And there are still some up. The Blue Micarta versions. So this knife came in or comes in four variations. There is, sorry, I'm trying to find another one. Um, basically, these are the variations. You can do Black G10 with Stonewash, Black G10 with Blackwash, Blue Micarta with Stonewash, or Blue Micarta with Blackwash. So you can, you know, all four of those versions. It does take the uh, Lynch clips and RGT clips. This version uh, and the Blackout G10 version are still available. The Blue Micartas are sold out at this current moment. So uh, if you do want to pick one up, we uh, appreciate it. You can use my code LEFTY10 for 10% off your order. They are $75 retail, so they're about $68 shipped to your door in the U.S. if you use the code LEFTY10. I think for that price, uh, you're getting a really sweet knife here. This uh, production version has the steel printed down here, or lasered 14C, and you have blue micarta and black hardware. It does have our logoed pivot, and as you can tell, I swapped out the clip on this guy already. The detents I asked for on these are uh, to be firm, so I've handled um, a good handful of the production versions, and they all were uh, satisfying detents for me. That's going to vary uh, per person, and of course, there's going to be variance in that, but you can see this guy has a nice snappy detent, so um, let's take her apart. You're going to use a T8 driver, and that is all you're going to need. This is actually a T10 I had in here from something. So you're going to want a Torx T8. I highly recommend Weeha Bits. Uh, all of my dissimile tools are linked down below. This is the um, Audacious Concepts driver anso driver and i love this thing i also have the i think the 5.0 this is a smaller one both are fantastic like i said all of my disassembly tools are linked below here's basically what i use kpl knife pivot lube.com you can get all different uh types of lubrication i highly recommend getting the three pack of all of them use my code lefty 10 for 10 percent off of those and then I have super glue for Loctiting. Uh, some people prefer Loctite. Again, that's all linked down below. And then you have the Q-tips from KPL and the Weeha bits. And the trays are all from Tinker Force. Tinker Force is awesome. So here we go. T8s. They Loctited this guy, which is nice. So we just had to break that. Carrying this for a day and a half or so and have not had it loosen at all. I also which is linked below. Always use alcohol. And then you can grab any microfiber you have. And I always clean the pivot screw. So you'll see a bunch of black shit come off of this. You can almost guarantee it. Okay. So that's not bad. That's really not bad. Usually it's a lot worse than that. So there we go. We clean that off. I usually clean inside the pivot. It's easier to do it at this point because I don't have to hold the little pivot and I got to push it out anyway so I'm not going to do any damage here but sometimes I forget and have to do it when I reassemble and that's just harder so I kind of just shove the driver in you can see that got some stuff out so there we go then we have T8s down here like I said the whole knife is going to be T8 the hardware is steel so uh, that was one of the ways we were able to keep the cost down was using steel hardware and a steel backspacer the knife still only weighs three ounces, so you don't even have to remove the clip or clip screw, as far as I know. Yeah, you can see this clip screw is right there. So don't have to remove that to take it apart. Comes apart like that. You have your stock 5mm 116th sort of Chinese OEM brass bearings in here. And they are uh, lubricated with the grease they like to use, which is why I can't get this out. 
Come on. I also don't have nails, so it makes it harder. There we go. Get that out. Now I can show you the internals in a second. So I'm just going to take these and clean them. Even though I'm probably not going to use these, I think I'm going to drop skiffs in because I'm keeping this one for myself. There we go. Clean that off. And then clean this part off. This is usually where I get the most gunk. So when I clean these pockets out. And look at that. That is what was in the knife from factory, which is fine. The action was really good, but I just prefer to clean my knife usually. Always clean the uh, tang here where it's going to lock up. Make sure there's no oil on there. That is how you'll get lockstick. If you have lockstick on your pony stout, I do recommend first. Um, you can always contact us, but I always recommend first you clean the lock bar and the tang with alcohol because a lot of times it's just oil on there um and you can just take a q-tip or whatever you can get alcohol on and clean it while it's put together just wipe this part with alcohol open it close it wipe it with alcohol do that a bunch of times and it usually clears it out so here's the inside you have a liner on this side a liner on that side there's no uh weight relief but honestly i don't think it needs it it's 3.1 ounces as is so um you know it would have obviously cost more to do um, milling, but we didn't even think to do it because the prototypes were lightweight, had no issue with it. Um, maybe if we do another run, we'll ask for that, but you know, that can change acoustics too. And sometimes it's just better to leave well enough alone on a knife this small. So um, it's 2.9 inches and 3.1 ounces. So it's right at the ounce and inch mark. We try to make sure our knives are all compatible with uh, skiff bearings. These are skiff five millimeter one sixteenth um, bearings, single row. Here you go. I think it's eleven ball. You can order those if you like to put it in your knife. The stock bearings are fine, as I showed you. Um, really didn't have an issue with that. And you never know with centering if you swap the bearings, so just keep that in mind. So here's our stop pin. It's going to be an internal stop pin, which is nice. Um, some people, uh, I noticed in one review, I think it was Stasa. He said he thought the plunge grind was a little bit late. So, I mean, you can see it clears just about where the edge starts. So yeah, um, hindsight being 2020, maybe we would have uh, brought that back a little bit if possible. I kind of remember asking and not being able to, but, um, what he was saying is you could cut your own choil in. So if you're somebody who needs a sharpening choil, once you know doesn't want to smile or whatever and you have the tools to cut your own sharpening choil in he was saying you could do that and it wouldn't affect anything because the stop pin is internal uh, i am not an expert on that so please do not take my word for that so uh, i'm going to clean the lock or the detent ball real quick make sure everything's nice and clean there's your ceramic detent ball and then i always take a q-tip and I clean in the detent hole. Why do I do that? Well, because you could have issues with your detent being weaker or um, have lash because there's something in there. Um, but I didn't have any of those issues here. I just wanted to clean it. A little bit there. I'm trying to be gentle and I went too far. There we go. Just wanted to put a little bit of KPL heavy. So in terms of a captive system on this guy, you have a D-shaped pivot across the top of the barrel here. And that will go into a D-shape up here. I don't know if you can see it. Should be anyway. Oh, sorry. The D-shape is on this side. They got me there. So what I'll do actually, and this is firmly affixed to the barrel. I love that heat when it's not. And I have seen that happen with our knives before. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, KPL. Okay, okay, okay. So what I want to do is just put a little bit on this barrel, which I've succeeded in doing. <laughs> um, and that's so that the blade has a little bit of lubrication because it does ride on that barrel. So it makes sense. 
And then I am now geared up to get the bearings lubed. So I put a little on my finger, do this, rub it back and forth, flip it over. There we go. Nice and lubricated. Slide that on, slide my blade on, grab my other bearings. Sometimes they're hard to find in this cork board. Flip her over. Oops. Okay. Drop that puppy on. Clean my hands a little bit. Okay. And then what I usually like to do is close the knife and assemble it that way. You can see there's nice clearance there between the blade and the backspacer, which is always good. Then we pop this guy on. Should just pop into place. Our D shape is in the proper orientation. Everything is nice and put together. Take our T8, drive that in a little bit, grab our body screws, centering came back nicely, and we put in our body screws. They seem to be the same length. If your body screws are ever a different length, make sure you set them aside in order. The way I'll do it is put the pivot here, put the next body screw here, the next one there, so I know I'm going down the line. Makes it easier. Since we didn't have to take the clip off, we can easily just put these uh, structural body screws in. See how it didn't tighten there? See that? Okay, what does that mean? Well, that means I need to back it out and re-thread. It's cross-threading. So I back out till I hear a click, oop, click, and now I can drive it in. Always want to be careful with that. Don't push through. These are tight. These are tight. I don't think they're on a barrel, but they might be. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Everything is put together, looks like, properly. Yep. Centering, again, looks good. Might be a little over to this side, but we'll see if it's too tight. Oh, that fired out. It is tight. Whoa. You can see the skiffs. I mean, it was already really good, but this is insane. Wow, that's nice. Centering's damn good, but it might be slightly off. Let me just... And what I'll do if that happens is I'll kind of loosen it and then just push the blade this way as I tighten. Maybe get that little bit of space cleared up. Yep. Now we are dead down the line. Then I got to make sure. Oh, it's snappy. No play. And it's butter. Wow. Impressive. QSP really killed these. Look at that. And that was pretty damn tight too. So here's what I'm going to do. This is my new trick. Probably need to be careful because it's my card of it. We'll see. So I'm drawing a line. And that'll indicate where I need to tighten to. So if I take this out, and we'll see if I need to push the blade over or not. Let's just see if it tightens to where I want it. So it's hard to keep an eye on that black ink. So there's where I was. Let's see the centering. Yeah, the centering's good. So I didn't really need to uh, push it over. I think I just needed to readjust it. I might do it anyway just to be safe, but... Oh, man, that's good. Yeah, all right, so take it out. And this is the tricky part if you wanna be like me and use super glue. You don't have to do it, right? You can just not use super glue, use Loctite, be smart, and then wait. I'm just not a waiter, guys. Well, I'm a YouTuber, I guess, not a waiter, but. <laughs> so I'll take a little bit on the Q-tip and I'll kinda of get it on the threads in here just to kind of preload it. And then I'll take some, damn, my hand's shaking, onto the pivot like so. And then I'll drive it in. And I try to be quick here. And I went a little looser, tighten it. Centering is money. Let's see if we have play though. No play, no rock. little bit tighter but it's dropping yeah that's gonna break in nicely and my centering's money so i like it 
I like it a lot. So then you could, if you wanted to, like tweak a little bit, you could loosen and then tighten stuff and see if that slides your centering one way or the other if you had an issue. I'm damn near dead center. I mean, this is going to sound a little pretentious, but on a uh, $75 knife, this is dead nuts. <laughs> okay. If I had uh, where I've struggled in the past is with, you know, a $700 knife like this. And, you know, is that dead centered? And I think it is. But I'm just saying there's kind of a balance to it for me. And I think this is great. Um, it is dead nuts. Like, it's just, yeah. So now I'm going to let it sit because that Loctite is going to, uh, you know, cure. And then I'll be able to carry it right away instead of having to wait two days. So I got some alcohol now on the cloth. Try to clear off that my uh, that Sharpie, which I was worried about putting on my Carta. And I was right to worry, I think, but it's coming off. Yeah, it's basically off. And then I'll just wipe the whole thing down so it looks normal. Now, your oils will interact with this. This micarta is gorgeous, guys. I really like this blue micarta. It's not denim, it's blue. And I like it better than denim because denim gets, like, grungy, you know? Um, this is nice. This knife came out exceptionally well for the price point, in my opinion. But I'm not going to sit here and toot my own horn. Um, yeah. But shout out to White Mountain Knives. They're doing a great job with this project. Uh, the drop and all that. Shout out to Colin for uh, being a, an amazing business partner. And uh, yeah, no no lash, no nothing. Just And snappy as all get out. Oh. Yeah. I'm really, really happy with this. Um, so let me know what you guys think if you're picking one up. We appreciate it, of course, if you do. Uh, this one has skips in it already. I've had this one for a while. This is my OG prototype. Um, it's just such an excellent uh, EDC knife, in my opinion, because ergonomically, it just melts in your hand. The stout, here's the OG. So I'll give you a little rundown of the stout while this cures up. We'll use this one. So here's the OG. Here's the Pony, and then here's the uh, V2 Stout that we're working on. And this is actually a culmination of these two, which is funny. Um, and we do plan to do a premium Pony at some point. So you guys let me know if you're interested in that. We might take this form and, like, shrink it down. But I don't know with the bolster lock. It might We might need to do a liner lock. But anyway, um, this was an amazing project. It was our first knife. We're so happy with how they came out. But there were some things we wanted to change, like it's too thick, right? Q, uh, QSP, sorry, just could not go thinner and would not go thinner. Um, to this day, they said they wouldn't be able to go thinner, so that's why we switched to Best Tech for the V2. Uh, but we love what QSP did, right? Um, but we felt like it could be thinner, and we felt like it could be a little bit taller as well. We felt like it could have a contour, um, a deeper hollow grind, you know, stuff like that. So... When we were working on the budget version, the Pony, we decided it would be good to shrink it down, you know, get it under that three inch blade length for people. Um, and then we wanted to make it thinner. So we did a steel liner lock and it, this comes out to, I think, 0.45 thickness or something. It's very thin. Yeah. 0 0.43, 0 0.44, something like that. Very, very thin blade. Uh, or knife, we have 0.11 stock with a hollow grind. So you have a similar hollow grind to the full size, but uh, no, it's actually thinner. But you take a hollow grind from a 0.14 stock and you put it on 0.11 stock, what do you get? You get ultra thin, right? You get an ultra thin grind, which is nice. Um, this one here, I was measuring at like, oops. I was measuring this one at, just zero that out, 12 thousandths at one point, hold on, Jesus, there, 13, 14, 14, 
14, right? Very thin. Let's try the other one. I'm just going to slow roll it out. This is the production version. Sixteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, so about the same. You know, the coating maybe could add a little bit. I'm not sure, but um, in practice, what it gives you is an ultra comfortable because of the size. The whole knife just fits into my hand. No extra hanging out. I'm in that choil. I have the poon spoon, and it just is very comfortable to slice with right and yeah i just think it came out to be an amazing edc knife the thinness the lightweight the size and then that blade and having that low tip to be able to uh you do utility cutting just works really well so anyway uh we incorporated all those things but we made it taller we made it thinner we contoured it. There's a slight contour on the scale. Um, and we used thinner stock. So then when we made the V2 prototypes, we kind of took the same steps. We added a slight contour. We made it taller, right, overall. The blade is a little taller than the V1. Very slight. I don't know if you can see it, but let's see if I stack them or something. level it out you can see just a little bit of that blade down there sticking out that's because it's a little taller um it's thinner right it has a slight contour and it's thinner i believe it's at 0.47 or 0.49 with the contour so 0.49 with the contour this is at 0.512 without um right we did a deeper hollow grind i think the stock is similar yeah i think it's the same stock but the hollow grinds deeper right this is almost feels like a flat this you can feel that nice hollow there uh, we added jimping you guys asked for that so we added jimping we didn't do it on the pony you didn't think it was necessary and then we added the milling lines the fat carbon and a milled clip which we're adjusting we're changing it to the wire clip setup, but we're going to make this clip milled. So it's going to be this clip that fits into these wire slots. And then the plan is to have the knife come with that and come with a backup wire clip so you can use whatever you want. And that'll get rid of this filler tab. We'll just have something like this, which I think will look a little nicer. Um, so anyway, that's the stout in general and uh, the pony stout disassembly. Let me know what you guys think. I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. If you want to pick one up, we greatly appreciate it. There's still some left at the time of filming this. And, uh, yeah, hope you have a great day. Thanks, guys. Peace.